Applique is an embroidery technique where you can essentially replace large areas of stitches with fabric. And you would lay that fabric down, stitch around it to tack it in place, and typically that would then, after you're done embroidering, be kind of permanently fixed with oftentimes a heat-sensitive adhesive, kind of an iron-on kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> what's great about it is it can really save you some stitches for some large areas, and you can even find kind of stitch effect material that looks like embroidery to replace those stitches. If you want just a fully embroidered look, you can do that. If you want to add texture or a different kind of look with that material, you can do that as well. Think about replacing the stitching of a polar bear body with white terry cloth, and you can give it kind of a fun, playful look. Or you can use minky, that really soft kind of fuzzy material to replace stitches and give it a nice fuzzy look for children's wear or something like that. It's a great tool to, one, you can save stitches, two, you can give it a nice different kind of look with whatever kind of material you're replacing those stitches with. And you can use applique whenever you're digitizing with just normal manual digitizing. And then uh, if the level of software permits, there is an applique input tool, which is a different video. So let's look at just normal digitizing, manually digitizing applique. Let's take a look at all the pieces that make up applique. On screen, I have a vector image. I'm going to use that as the material. So I'm going to make it appear as you would as you were laying down material. And I'm going to make all of these hide and we'll kind of go in the order with the pieces of applique. So I'm going to show the first one and the first one typically is a locator stitch. Locator stitch is usually just the size and shape of the material so that you know where to lay the material down. Now I like to have my material pre-cut. So I would at this point notice that my next element is a different color. That's so that I can put an applique stop in at the machine so it will feed the frame forward and wait for me. At that point I can then lay my material down. Typically I would do that with a little spray adhesive. Some applique materials offer a pressure sensitive adhesive so it's kind of a peel and stick that then can be later permanently fixed with heat. I would lay that material down and then I would press the green button. It would go back in and it would sew a tack down stitch and it would look something like this. And there are different options for tack down stitches, zigzags, E stitches, inset walks, inset beans. You, you've got tons of options to choose from and we can look at some of those. But typically this is where you would be when you tack down the material. And the idea of the tack down is to attach the material as quickly as possible without shifting it. What I don't want to see is material that looks something like this because as it was being sewn around, it shifted. So I like to, let me undo that. I like to use a stitch that's going to attach very quickly with kind of a light density, and it's not going to push the material very much. So again, I like tackle stitches, E stitches, zigzags. Even a light walk works well for me. I've told this story in other videos. When I was starting out as a digitizer, I thought I would be very clever and save stitches. And so I figured if it was going to be followed up by a satin stitch, why did I need to tack anything down? And my operators got very mad at me because the satin stitch pushed the material because it was dense enough that it would start to shift that applique material and nothing lined up at the end. So that was not a good day for me. And I want you guys to learn from my mistakes and use a tack down stitch. It's pretty helpful. After I have my tack down, I would then have the option of following it up with a cover stitch, which is typically a satin stitch. Now, sometimes, yes, I might be done without a cover stitch. I might be done just with a tack down. This is what a lot of people consider a tackle twill 
look where it is like the numbers on the backs or fronts of sport jerseys where the edges are slightly exposed and it is a usually polyester twill material. This at that point would be done. If you want a more finished look, you can of course follow it up with a satin stitch or another stitch over the top of it. So those are kind of my, my three embroidery pieces, my locator, my tack down, and then my optional cover stitch. And then of course you have your material. I said I like to have my material pre-cut and that's true for a few reasons. One, it's just faster for me to have that pre-cut and you can send that locator stitch as a cut line or a cut file to a cutter. Great, I can have it cut to that shape and size perfectly. You can also send it to somebody to have it laser cut. So if you're dealing with polyester, all the edges are kind of fused. And then if you're leaving those edges exposed, they can't really fray. That's really kind of nice. If you're just doing one or two, you may want to hand cut those. In which case, I would sew that locator stitch on the material itself and then cut it out. You can lay the material down, sew around it, and then use applique scissors, which have kind of a flat little edge to them, to cut around your material while it's on the garment. I am not good at that. I will oftentimes cut through my stitching. I will oftentimes cut through my garment. I am not good at that. I prefer to have it pre-cut so that I don't have to worry about that. But that is another option. So now that we've seen all of these pieces, let's see how to actually digitize them. So I have just this artwork here. I deleted all of the stitching. This could be raster, it could be vector. If it's vector and you have the option of change element type, this becomes very, very fast. I'm going to pretend like I don't have that option right now. So I'm going to begin just digitizing around the shape. So I'm gonna zoom in. I'm going to grab a walk stitch for my locator. And then I am just going to digitize around the form. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise. It's completely up to you. If you make a mistake, hit backspace. I'm holding Alt to constrain these line angles to 15 degree increments. In this case, it's actually 90 degree increments. And then to close the shape, I'm going to hold Shift and hit Enter, and that will close that shape. And there is my locator stitch. So locator stitch is done. The color of the locator stitch really can change depending on your application. Some people like to have it match the material of the applique itself. Some people like to have it match the material of the garment or the product that you're embroidering on. I, I like that idea because it, it tends to hide itself fairly well if for some reason some part of it's going to show. But it does make it a little bit difficult to see if you don't have good lighting in your production space. So I like it to match the garment. If I'm, if I'm doing that tackle twill look and it's going to be exposed, you don't see that, that locator stitch as much because it's matching the garment. So that's kind of a nice way to hide that. But again, if you don't have good lighting and you're trying to line up to a thread color that matches what it's being sewn on, that can be really tough. Um, if you have a very high contrast stitch, then make sure that you're going to be using a cover stitch that covers it up afterwards. So now that I have that, I need to digitize my tack down stitch. And to do that, I'm going to use a single line. The other thing that I wanna do, I wanna make sure that I'm using a different color. That way I can put in an applique stop for the machine color sequence so that the machine will stop and wait for me.
And now the process is exactly the same, except I get to specify a width. And this too, I'm going to hold shift and hit enter to close that shape. And now it's asking for a width. I'm good with the default, so I'm gonna hit enter again. I say I'm good with the default. I'm gonna make a lot of changes here, so I don't really care where I start. So let's get this centered up on screen and we'll take a look. If I right click and I go to properties, I'm going to go into my single line. I like a little more room than 20 points, that's two millimeters. That doesn't give me a lot of wiggle room, especially if I'm hand cutting. So I like something a little bit bigger. I like 30 points. And then let's change how this falls. I, I would like a little more of it to fall to the inside than to the outside. I like, for my tack down, I like a 2080 split. And if I get the wrong one, I just have to, this one I got right. But uh, if I if I digitize the opposite direction, I may have to put in 80 to get it to be mostly to the inside. But I'm looking for mostly to the inside and a little bit to the outside. And then let's go in and change our stitch type. So here we could do a zigzag. That's a very loose stitch. Tackle is just like a zigzag, but a little bit denser. That's the one that I use probably most often. Another option to look at would be an E-stitch. And an E-stitch is where it goes around the outside edge and then jumps in to tack it down. But I think I'm gonna go back to just a tackle. Now for this tack down, I don't really want to come all the way up into here. I want it to be very much the way that it would be if it was a traditional sewing machine zigzagging around the edge. And I, I can't taper that. I just come to a corner and essentially put my needle down, pull my presser foot up and turn and come back. So to change the type of corner, I'm gonna go into corners. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm going to change this to a miter style two. It's that other type of corner. There we go. And then the other thing, I'm going to have it do it at every corner. So I'm going to increase this. And now it's going to make that transition at every corner. So this is very much like it would be if I was using a traditional sewing machine. And that's what I think I would do. I've been using single line to create my tack down and my cover stitch. What do you do if you don't have that tool or you have that tool, but you don't have corners the way that I do. So you can't change to a miter style one or a miter style two for your tack down. Use a different tool. Please don't let your level of software prevent you from experiencing and using applique. It's a great technique. You can digitize for it using other tools. Column one is the tool that I used for years or a tool very much like it before single line was available. Is single line faster? Sure. Do I have to have it? No. Um, if you find that this is something that you're going to be doing a lot, then maybe, yeah, look at upgrading your software so that you have the faster tools. But if you do it every now and then, you can digitize for applique using other tools. Now, if I was doing just a tackle twill look, I would be done at this point. If I want to finish it up with a cover stitch, I can do that. Now, I've already digitized around this once. I'm just going to right click on this and go to duplicate. Now I have another one. I'm going to change that color. I like my tack down and my cover stitch to be a separate color so that I can put an applique stop in at the machine in between those as well. Now, why would I do that? It's already attached. Yes, but if the 
fabric is sticking out a little bit. If I wasn't as careful with my scissors when I was hand cutting and I have a little bit extra that needs to be trimmed up, I have a chance to trim that up a little bit before that cover stitch goes over it, before that satin goes over it and cleans up that edge a little bit. So I like that give me a second chance to just look over my embroidery and make sure it's what I really think it should be before I press the green button and have it sew that cover stitch. So I have my locator, my tack down, and my cover all different color blocks. They can be the same color, they can sew in the same color of thread, but I need them to be different color blocks. So for applique designs, I have auto merge turned off. We'll look at that. But I, I like them to be different color blocks so that I can put an applique stop in the machine and just double check my work before it's sewn in and it's too late for me to fix anything. So when I am sewing, I like to have auto merge turned off. That way I can have them, I could have this be black and I could have this be the same black, but because auto merge is turned off, they will not collapse into each other. I could have this be red, or I could have it be a gray that's slightly off from the material of the garment. And then let's go in and edit this cover stitch. So I'm gonna right click, go to properties. I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see a little bit more what's going on. And I'm going to go into my single line and here I'm going to change it to 40 points, give myself a little bit more room. And then I like to have it be a little bit more to the outside just in case that little trim that I did on the machine sticks out a little bit or fuzzes out a little bit. I have a little bit more room. So I like my cover stitches 25, 75 split and at 40 points. Can you do thinner stuff? Yes, absolutely you can. It depends on how cleanly you can cut and how stable your material is. So let's zoom back out and let's go into top stitching and I think for this I will do a satin stitch and then let's deal with some of these corners because this may work well for a tack down but for a cover stitch I like my corners to be a little bit cleaner so I'm going to turn on cap I'm going to turn on a style one miter if it's too much for a cap to deal with hit apply and okay and there I have a nice, clean looking applique. So I've got my locator, and then I would lay down that material, and then I would tack it down. If I was just dealing with tackle twill, I would be done. If I wanted to finish it up with a satin stitch, I could put a cover stitch, which is slightly wider, right over the top of that. And again, I like everything to be its own color block. In previous applique videos I've done, I've done a very similar M. It got some comments, hey, that's great, but it's only one letter. What do you do if it's more? And my response in my head was the same thing over again. You do every letter again and again and again and again. That's not a very nice answer. It, um, if you have something that's not very stable, unfortunately, that is the answer. You do letter by letter so that everything lines up. If you have something that's a little more stable, you can do all of the locators and then all of the tack downs and then all of the covers, but that requires you resequencing the design. So let's look at what that might look like. So here I have a design. And it's applique spelled out. And if I play this out, it does one letter and then a tack down and then a cover and then the next one. And I'm going from the center out because I want to deal with the push of the material that way. This is how I would typically do something like this. Now, in a production environment, that's that's a lot of placements. That's a lot of me stopping the machine, going back over. So what you could do, you could, and I have all of these separated out, 
as different colors. All of my locators are red, all of my tack downs are green, and all of my covers are blue, just to make it easier to see on screen here. What you could do is you could select all of the locators and drag them to sew together. And then I would have auto merge on so that they all sew the locators. And then I would select all of those, all of my tack downs, and sew them together. And so if that's the case, you would sew all the locators, lay down all the material, and then sew all of the tack downs, and then sew all of the covers. To be honest, I've not had a ton of luck with that. Now, I've not done every letter individually very often either. I kind of go in between. I will do a set of three letters, all three letters, and I locate them, then I tack them down, then I cover them, and then I move to the next one. So it's kind of, it's not as inefficient as every single letter. It's more efficient than that. My chances of lining up are better than doing everything all at once. So I try to find a little bit of a hybrid. I will do a few letters at a time. So what does that look like? Well, that looks like I would do the I, the L, and the P, and then the I, the L, and the P, and the I, the L, and the P. And then I would do the QUE last. So I'm just changing how these are ordered. And so now it would sew kind of three letters at a time. And my chances of lining up go up with this, but it's not so inefficient. I just want to scream when I'm trying to do production. So that is another option for that. Another question that gets asked is, well, what do I do if my outlines aren't all just completely even? And my answer to that is deal with the outline separately. So I, for this, would do a locator and then lay the material down and then I would do the tack down and the tack down is pretty even all the way across. And then I digitize everything separately and I do it with column twos, all of these little pieces. Now what I may choose to do is duplicate my tack down, change its color to something crazy make it 40 points wide and use that as the artwork for the wider areas. And then I will taper in on the ends as needed. That's very common for me. And then I will delete that element back out there. So it's pretty common for me if I have something like this to use a single line as kind of artwork to digitize over for, you know, what is the minimum width I want for my cover stitch in areas where it needs to be a cover stitch as opposed to when it's just visual detail. So that's how I would digitize an applique from start to finish using just my walk stitches for my locators, either a walk that's inset, like 10 points in, maybe 15 points in uh, for a tack down if I want to walk tack down, or I typically use a tackle stitch. So I would use a, a single line and, and kind of offset that to that custom kind of 2080 split. And then if you want a cover stitch, I like 2575 split and I like a width of around 40. And yeah, I do go in and I change that. And if I'm feeling very good about my scissors and my trimming skills, then yes, I can make those tack downs and covers a little bit smaller. But 30 points for a tack down, 40 points for a cover is where I typically start. And then I will adjust as the design needs it.